if somebody feels that at a certain time he needs a break, somebody does like that, okay? And uh, it, w when I see it, I will stop. And then, uh, okay, goodbye. <laughs> no, so um, let's go back to uh, the last lecture. So we saw that uh, in order to perform the program of equivalent localization, we need uh, um, to have a theory in which there exists a Grassmann node conserved charge, which is a, a scalar. So such that it's squared is a bosonic conserved charge. Very good. If this stuff exists and some other, uh, uh, some, let's say, technical uh, details are satisfied, like the compactness of the action of the bosonic charge and other stuff, then uh, we, can, uh, we, can, uh, we can turn on this, uh, this, uh, this powerful machinery and compute uh, the, the, co the sector of the theory, which is sitting in the cohomology of this uh, supercharger. Now, supercharge means that it is natural to look at these objects in supersymmetric theories. Okay, so in the supersymmetric theories, you have, in general, a set of supercharges which are labeled by a spin index and an R symmetry index. So the natural thing that you would do to generate a scalar supercharge is to take these objects and saturate the indices against something like that. Where this something will be space time dependent. Okay. And okay, so if you are in a flat background, that's what you usually do because I mean spinners are constants and uh, I mean these, these objects are constant constant numbers and you count the supercharges that you have the action of uh, the, 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 the action of this uh, rotation group in the spinorial representation and their symmetry are action which acts everywhere in the space in the same way very good now in a curved space in general you do r local rotations, and in principle, you can do local version of uh, their symmetry. So what happens it, uh, is that it is natural in, uh, in curved spaces to mount this kind of objects if uh, you have, uh, instead of constant, covariantly constant spinners. It means that this psi stuff, instead of being constant, will become covariantly constant, where now the covariant derivative here will be given by par the partial derivative plus a spin connection in the spin order representation plus an R symmetry connection. Okay, so if there are solutions of these equations, of this kind of equation, then you can use the zero modes of this shifted differential to produce scalar supercharges. Very good. So the condition of having solution of this type will give uh, some constraints on uh, the geometry. So you need uh, to be able to build uh, this, uh, this connection and to have uh, zero modes for this. So this was uh, studied by uh, Dumitrescu, Seiberg, uh, and also uh, Zaffaroni, Thomas Yellock, uh, and a uh, lot of people several years ago. But Indeed, the, the fact of being able to 
compensate the presence of the spinorial indices with their symmetry index was understood much earlier in a more in, in a simpler way by Witten, and it was going under the name of topological twist. Now, I will just review it in the case in the in the simplest case instead of doing it in general. Now, let's say that we live in in even dimensions. So, this spin bundle of the, of the manifold splits in two chiralities, while I assume that I'm dealing with n types of supersymmetry so that I have a UN R symmetry bundle. Okay, so let's take for definiteness d equal to four, and let's try to study the, um, the possibilities. Now, see, this uh, is uh, the splitting of uh, spin four uh, in terms of uh, representations of SU2 uh, plus uh, SU2. Okay, the, the usual representations of spinors in two chiralities. Okay, and now let's start from the whether there are possibilities for n equal to one. For n equal to one, it's very hard because I, I mean, U1R is not enough to saturate SU2 indices. What can happen? Instead, is that the, 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 the tangent bundle of the manifold, therefore also it's a spinorial representation, the spin bundle, has a, a reduced structure group. Okay, suppose that, for example, our four manifold is a, a, a P1 vibration over a torus. Uh, yes, so this is the projection and the, this is the fiber. Good. So in this case, under some conditions, under some conditions, the structure group reduces indeed to U1 cross U1. And in this case, I can saturate the, um, the, um, the, the spinorial indices. Indeed, if the structure group of the tangent bundle goes, I mean, reduces to U1 cross U1, which is this case, then the spinors will transform in the representation plus or minus one half, let's say one, one, two, one plus, plus minus one half, two. And therefore, I can choose an asymmetry bundle, which is, let's say, Take the R equal to one half one, for example, and then I can twist these factors. These are the spinors, and there is, of course, one spinor, which is the lower component of this first doublet, which will stay as a scalar. And like that, in cases in which my manifold has this, this, uh, this reduction of the structure group, it is, it is easy to find a, a scalar supercharge. Very good. So this is one of the solutions that were um, uh, discovered in the uh, in the more recent uh, 
studies uh, of this problem as a rigid uh, super, super gravity backgrounds. For n equal 2, Yes, 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 yes. There are, uh, I mean, it, it, it was commented at a certain point. I think in the first paper by Dimitrescu, uh, Cyber, I don't remember who else. Yes, yes, sorry, first two chat. Of course, of course, they forgot to, to, to mention him. Uh, very good. So now let's do the same game for uh, n equal to, which is a, uh, which is a, um, Vitas game, no? And I mean, this is the era of our story, eh? n equal to, uh, equal to four gauge theory. So, better it to work in this case. So, now the symmetry bundle is uh, u2, or uh, usually you write as u2 cross u1, although there is a z2, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so now at this point, since there is a possibility of choosing an SU2 bundle, like the natural thing is to say that, okay, let's take already as their symmetry bundle R, really one of the two spin bundles, let's say S plus. And now let's see what happens of our, of our spinners. Now our spinners, since I mean, they will cap, ca, 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 come in couples, so one doublet comes with twisted by the R symmetry bundle S plus, and this is the sim, uh, this is the uh, two by two uh, representation of S two. I split in symmetric and anti-symmetric, and they find. 1 plus 3, okay, this is a, a vehicle with 3 plus, okay, this is a singlet, and this is, a, the, these are the self-dual two forms on the, on the manifold, very good. On the other side, the, the other doublet instead, as, plus, as minus as plus, this will give uh, just uh, the, the the vector representation. No? Okay, so you see that immediately I find a singlet here. And uh, okay, so for any Riemann manifold, there is a way of doing it. Of course, uh, what what is the, the what is the point? Is that this theory, which is the topologically twisted one, uh, is not uh, equivalent to the theory that I was studying. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the supersymmetric theory in which the R symmetry bundle is twisted off. Okay. In which case the two theories will be, sim will be equivalent? In the case in which I can choose one factor of the tangent bundle to be trivial. So, the case in which the true structure group of the tangent bundle is just the SU2. This is the case in which the manifold is a K3. Okay, a, a toy model for Calabi-Yau, but in four dimension. In this case, the theory are, are indeed physically equivalent. Very good. So then the, the one, one can play also the game of doing the same types of game for n equal to four theory. And I think that uh, um, I will not review it, but you basically find now that the symmetry is an SU4, so you, can, uh, you, you, you have more freedom in choosing these SU2 factors. You split the SU4 representation in SU2 cross SU2 cross U1, the U1 stays turned off, and you find essentially three types of twisting, well, uh, something which is called one half twisting, then there is a, a um, and then there are two, two other twisting called the Markov twist and the um, Cyberwit, uh, the, the uh, Waffawit and twist. Okay, very good. I will not review it. Instead, let me just say that we can do the same type of game for two comma two the theories 
And in this case, there are two twists, which are called A twist and B twist, the ones of the topological string. Okay, but we will not review it because it is of, uh, outside the scope of this set of lectures. Okay, so now let's go back to our toy model for the computation before trying to enter the story of the necklace of partition function. Very good. So I would like just to, um, to state, not to prove, some results which were obtained. Orca miseria, sempre talavagna vuole morire. Which were obtained by a student of Necrosov whose name is Sergei Shabchin 06-11-278 and then taken by a lot of people later. Okay, so the idea is to study UN theories in D equal to with 2,2. Uh, Susie. Okay, doing uh, UN gauge theories, it means that they can classify by a total vorticity the gauge connection. This is the integral of uh, the, let's say, the, the, the computation on a P1. And in a generic vacuum where this group is broken to the one to the n, okay, in the generic Coulomb, Coulomb uh, vacuum, then the total vorticity splits in the components along the Cartan. Okay, so very good. Now we want to compute uh, now uh, the theory has a U1 rotation of the sphere, which is our isometry. And so the natural Cartan to turn on is U1 of C, okay, of the disk, times U1 to the N, which is the, the, the Cartan of our gauge group. And now let's jump into the equivalent character. This has to be given, this is given by a, by a set of vector, sp uh, of, uh, vector spaces which are labeling the representations of this cartan on the tangent space of uh, the vortex moduli spaces which you can study under this fixing of the topological charges. This is, uh, this is classified by, okay, let's define a vector space action like that. These are symbols to us. where these T are the exponential coordinates of uh, the group action, okay, so of this group action, TH bar is uh, the exponential coordinate for this group, uh, sorry, TH bar is the exponential coordinate for this group, and uh, TAL L are the exponential coordinates for this, for, for the Cartan of the, gauge, of the gauge group. So, through this, we mount the equivalent character, which is given for the vector multiplet 
by this space where the terms with the plus sign are giving the, um, the, the matter content of the theory and uh, let's say the vector multiple content and the term with the minus sign corresponds to the BPS equation that fix the, um, the vacua of the, of the theory. Very good. So I can do the computation of this stuff under this decomposition of the indices. These are the, uh, the, the way in which we keep track of the action, of, of the group action um, on, the, on the indices, which was the only thing which was left over in the computation of the equivalent index. And we find, just manipulating the symbols, that this stuff give This, uh, this formula okay so from this uh, now we read uh, the product formula that we had uh, um, to, re to to uh, we, that we have to read the well loop term for this two-dimensional theory. And indeed, I find that up to an overall one over gamma sorry, product over a, a, L and M, I have a factor of one over gamma A, L, M. Here I'm taking L different from M. Then uh, there is uh, an overall product, uh, one KL, uh, one over ALM plus I minus one minus KM H bar. So this object, uh, this prefactor is called, it is indeed what I would call Z1 loop. Uh, so the part which is uncharged of the wall loop measure with respect to the topological uh, number, topological charges of the, of the vortices, okay? And then there is this, this stuff which is defining the, um, the component, let's say, Z vortex, depending on K. These are functions of the A's. Very good. This is the result for the, um, for the vector multiplet. I can also add anti-fundamental matter, for example, and this will give similar contributions. Let's write it for completeness so and to have an idea or of what are, what is the thing which will come out in the end. So I have to add to the vector character also the character of anti-fundamentals. Now it will, be it will be given by this, by V, tensor, um, uh, the RC, the, um, the flavor. The, the, the flavor bundle, okay, where Tm is the sum over F from 1 to an F of Tmf and Tmf is equal to e to the Mf. These are the, the, the masses are the charges of the flavor bundle once it's broken. And uh, um, I mean, this. Uh, this stuff is breaking u and f down to u1 to the mf. 
and this corresponds then in the end to have instead of these factors here, have a factor that is a minus sign, which comes from the fact that you remember, uh, I mean, there were plus or minus multiplets, and so ones come with, some, with plus, others come with minus. For the matter, they come with a minus. And for the anti-fundamentals, I will find this, uh, um, sorry, the one-loop the one term has, let's say, it's this one-loop, which is uh, indeed given by a product for L equal to 1 to N and F from 1 to an F. Sorry, I should put an F bar because uh, these are anti-fundamentals of gamma AL plus MF. This is the analog of this one loop term, but now for matter, and it comes to the numerator. And then uh, there is a Z anti-fundamentals uh, kappa which instead is given by a product over L from 1 to N, from F from 1 to an F bar, from I from 1 to KL of, again, AL plus I minus 1 H bar plus MF. Okay. So, you see that in the end, I can now mount a generating function for all these objects. Or if you prefer, I compute the full partition function of the theory, which now will weight the product of all these terms for the, for the, for the, for the vector multiplet and possibly matter parts against the value of uh, the action, which uh, uh, and the topological action, which is given by the Fayetti-Lioplos coupling times uh, the integral of the trace of f may be divided by 2 pi. So the total vorticity. Very good. So in the end, the partition function of the thing we are computing is given by a sum over all the splitting of Okay, over, over, uh, sum over kappa, and then I have a, fac a, a factor of numerator and denominator given by Pochammer symbols, times e to the minus zeta times kappa. So, the fayetti loplos coupling comes as a, a uh, as a variable for the special function which computes the partition function of the, of the vortex counting problem. And it comes naturally in a form which, which is a generalized hypergeometric function. Okay? I remind that the nature, I mean, what I have in mind is that this structure in which I have ratios of Pochammer symbols which are these objects here and these objects here. So the structure we have in mind, uh, which we are generalizing through vortex partition functions, is that uh, of the classical
of the classical uh, hypergeometric sum. Where now the role of V is taken by the exponential of a Heteliopoulos coupling. So the thing is, uh, is, uh, is interesting in a way because now from this viewpoint, we could have di discovered the theory of hypergeometric functions just by studying supersymmetric quantum field theory. So, of course, mathematicians came first. But it is a, a good sign that maybe there is something interesting beyond two dimensions. So, the program of the rest of this, of this set of lectures is to convince you that indeed, if we go to four dimensions, we find something really interesting, or at least amusing. OK, so now suppose that we were doing the computation for our four-dimensional gauge theory. And uh, the first thing we have to give are the set of fixed points. So the way we do it is the following. We first classify BPS states before the full equivariant localization is turned on, which means that we set the theory to be in a BPS vacuum given by the instant on equation. And then we will fix in the modular space of solutions of this, BP, of, of this BPS equation we will fix the problem of counting. I mean, the, to do the, the equivalent counting. So this is the way in which typically these computations are done. Good. So let's start by describing this set of the modular space of instantons first, and then let's see how the group I want to use to do equivariance is uh, um, uh, acts on the thing. Okay, very good. So I remind that in uh, that, that for su that, that uh, um, supersymmetry in uh, I. I I assume that, that all of you have seen the transformation rule of uh, the vector multiplet under supersymmetry, and you know why this equation is the BPS equation. OK, very good. So now let's, uh, let's be brave, and let's review shortly the ADHM construction. It's a, a nice exercise to be done. So we want to solve this equation in R4. So we represent our coordinates like quaternions, and we introduce the conjugate coordinates. Like that, where sigma mu are one comma Pauli matrices, the uh, sigma mu bar are one comma minus Pauli matrices, and then we notice that to find self-dual two forms, it is enough to consider the x weight, the x dagger, and this is uh, labeling the SU two. representation in lambda uh, in lambda plus while the x dagger wedge the x represents the lambda minus okay so this is the split of the six 
of the, of the uh, SU2 cross SU2 in three plus plus three minus. Okay, very good. So the final goal is to align whatever we write here in the lambda plus. Very good. So this will be the way in which we treat the thing. Now we have to invent a way to parameterize this connection. So let's remind that we want to align F plus in the direction which is uh, uh, F in the direction which is uh, uh, plus. Okay, so the way in which we proceed, I mean, we proceed, I mean, we copy from uh, uh, Atia, Dreamfield, Manning, and, uh, and Hitchin. Okay, so we pick our connection. This uh, is uh, understood uh, as being uh, a, a, an N by a matrix, but we want to give him an internal topological charge. So let's say that we want uh, to add uh, the degrees of freedom of uh, a, a, an instant of with topological charge kappa. So the right way of doing it is uh, to write this uh, in this form where U is not uh, a, is a rectangular matrix which extends uh, the pure gauge. So U is an object which sits in the matrix space to K times uh, plus N times uh, N. We normalize this matrix to satisfy this condition. Notice that here I'm, I'm saturating two kappa plus n indices. Okay, these are rectang bigger rectangular matrices. Bigger of a factor of two kappa times n than a, a, a pure gauge a degree of freedom. So I expect to find more or less that this will be, tra uh, will be parameterizing the moduli. Of course, I mean, now this u will be space-time dependent. We have to see what is the, na the natural space-time dependence I can write down in order to satisfy the alignment condition I wanted before. So let's co start computing F as being the A plus A, which A, I substitute, I find du dagger with U plus U dagger U, U dagger U, and then I rewrite this as du dagger 1 minus u u dagger du. Okay, very good. This object that I'm finding here is uh, the object that I need to tame because once I will tame the presence of this object, then and try to bring the, the, the structure of the indices, which is a uh, here and here inside, then I can discuss the, case, the cases in which I can align the two, these two forms in the self-dual self direction. Now, this stuff is a projector. Indeed, you can compute immediately that pi squares 1 minus 2 u u dagger plus u u dagger u u dagger, but since u u dagger is one, this stuff comes with one of these, I stay with one minus u u dagger, which is pi again, very good. On top of it, pi dagger is equal to pi. So this is a, a projector, very good. So this projector satisfies, of course, the condition that pi of u is equal to zero. So, I parameterize this projector. It is an indirect parameterization of the, uh, the moduli data. So I write pi as delta f 
delta dagger, where now the two conditions, this and pi squares equal to pi, boil down to two conditions, delta dagger u equal to zero, and delta dagger delta equal to f minus one. Okay, so this condition is telling me that the U's are the orthonormal because I fixed this normalization, zero vectors of this projector, okay, written in this parametrization, and F is normalizing, let's say, the non-zero part of the projector. Okay, so now let's substitute this stuff in this parameterization in the in our expression for f, I get the u dagger delta f delta dagger d u, and now using the fact that delta dagger u is equal to zero, you see that they can bring the d, the d from here to there. Okay, and also the d from u dagger to, to d, to delta. I have two minus signs which cancels out, and so I find this to be equal to u dagger d delta f d delta dagger u. Okay, now let's, now we can impose the condition that this stuff is proportional to dx, dx dagger. Which was our which was our condition we wanted to solve. Okay, so in order for this to work, I need to put two conditions. The first one is that d delta is equal to let's say dx tensor, the identity in cap in k dimensions plus a rectangle of zeros and the second condition is that our factor f which is a 2k times 2k splits as the identity in two dimensions times whatever in kappa by kappa dimension. So that the, the um, quaternion part of the of this term is, uh, uh, is, um, is purely real so that they can bring the dx's around. Uh, there is nothing, there is no quaternion inside and so you find essentially dx wedge, dx twiddle, dx dagger, which is the thing I want. Okay, so let's solve these two conditions. Let's call them one and two. Because after that, we will find in the end, the, the, the final formula okay, the, for, for the f. Okay, so let's write down the, let's solve these two conditions. First, uh, we solve the first one. The first one is easy because it is a simple differential equation, which uh, we solve by saying that delta can be parameterized by, up by x tensor one kappa, and now I can add a, a, a constant part, which I split into terms, one which is two kappa times n, and the other uh, times two kappa, and the other part which is two kappa times n. Very good. So these matrices will, will, will parameterize the moduli space. Indeed, now I wanted to impose this second condition. Now, 
the, to import the second condition, I should go back, uh, I should go back uh, to, uh, okay, to this, to this stuff. Here, now, this F is given by the formula up here, up to the inversion. So if F is a pure, is, is a pure real quaternion, also if F minus one will be, and it's a server. So we can impose the condition instead of on F, on F minus one. And so, which means, going back to the parameterization data there, that delta dagger delta needs to have a, a, only a pure, a, a, only a, a purely real quaternion structure. Now, the only term which uh, might have a non-zero projection on the three um, on the three Pauli matrices signaling an imaginary part of the quaternion are the terms coming by taking the square of x and the square of y. Now this has to be written carefully. So this contains the term x dagger x plus y dagger y. I have to expand this in quaternionic indices, so the two by two and the two by two structure from here. And here I find that this stuff will have a form of one half x plus, uh, sorry, x new, x new. I'm expanding capital X in sigma matrices plus one half x mu x mu. One is symmetric, the other is anti-symmetric, the symmetric part will not matter. And then there is the rest of the expansion of the y dagger y. All in all, I will find a simple equation, which is that one half x mu x mu sigma bar mu nu eh, sigma bar mu si, sigma nu plus sorry okay so I'm uh, computing this uh, and then I take the trace against sigma i okay to put to zero the part of the quaternion that I don't want. So I compute the imaginary part of this quaternion and they put it to zero. So I have this plus y dagger y, and this has to be equal to zero. And this is now a set of three different, three uh, algebraic equations which are quadratic in the, um, in the, in the x and in the y entries. Now, if I compute the dimension of this module, of the modular space of solutions of these ADHM equations, I find that all in all, I add four k squared real variables for the axis, plus two, because they are complex variables, times two, and k variables for the y's, so these are the x, these are the y's, then you have to get rid of three conditions that I found and one U1, uh, UK conjugation symmetry that I have in the game. All in all, I find that the real dimension of the space is the dimension of the y's for and k. Indeed, the space is hypercolor. We will not review that, but we write these equations here in a more palatable way. I introduce the one equal one over root of two, x1 plus ix2, b2 
1 over root of 2 x, x3 plus i x4. Y I parameterize as I j dagger. And they find that these equations, the ADHM constraints, can be written in these complex variables in this much simpler way. which you find in Necros of Literature and okay. okay, good. So these are the set of points where we shall um, start the computation of the um, equivalent localization. Okay, so you want to stop uh, five minutes or shall I go on? Okay, let's have... Okay, very good. At the first, the first shot. Okay. Okay. So now that we know the space where. Is natural to act with equivariance. Which is the space of solutions of these ADHM equations, which we will keep in this blackboard. And now we have to see what is the action of the um, what is the, of the, of the torus of the global symmetries we have at hand okay so what is the torus of global symmetries the torus of global symmetry is written very small so i will put my glasses so the global symmetry of our problem for instant on number k is uk times gauge group times SO4 space-time rotation. And so let's parameterize by the letters chi i, the cartan of UK, let the letters AU, the cartan of UN, and with the letters epsilon i, the two cartan of SO4. And now, let's read. You remember that B1 and B2, they were kappa by kappa matrices, and they were, in, and they were corresponding to rewriting R4 as C2. So the Cartan group, let's remind that it is nothing but our Q squared, acts on the BLs as chi i minus chi j plus epsilon L, while it acts on the i is chi i minus a u plus epsilon and on the j is a u minus chi i. Very good. 
In doing the computation, you remember that on top of taking into account the degrees of freedom, I have to take into account the relations among them. The relation among them in, uh, in the equivalent setting has to be thought uh, as uh, constraints that uh, will impose the computation of the equivalent character. And therefore, uh, I have to classify also how this, uh, how the multiple imposing this, uh, this relation transform. So, Let's say that it is, uh, this is uh, induced by a, a Lagrange multiplier and C as complex, this by an NR real condition. Now, of course, on the real, Q square acts like that. because it is a, a space-time scalar, while this transforms like a 2,0 form and so brings Ni minus Nj plus Epsilon. Okay, good. So, what's this set? Uh, sorry, this Epsilon, Epsilon, is nothing but epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. This is the standard notation. Sometimes also epsilon plus. Good. So, statement which I won't, I will not prove, and even, okay, I will try to justify later with a cartoon, is the following. Now, the, we, we have to find the solutions of the condition that the action here gives a zero, okay, because this is the infinitesimal action, and uh, the i, the j, and the b, they don't, uh, they, they are not zero, of course, otherwise we are uh, not parameterizing anything. Very good. So the statement is the following. The solution of this problem, the, so, the set of solutions of this problem can be parameterized by a set of uh, capital N Jan tableaus. Ah, oh. Tableaus, let's write them as y1, yn, with all in all kappa equals to sum over number of boxes of all the Yan tableaus. Uh, with the, uh, an overall number of kappa boxes. So you have to pick kappa boxes and distribute in uh, uh, n Yan tableaus. And then I can label, label the boxes, the box position in the Yan tableau with two numbers, let's say IU, JU, which are the coordinate in the youth Yan tableau of the story, and then the solution are given by chi I, given by a given Yan tableau, equal to AU, plus IU minus one half epsilon one plus JU minus one half epsilon two. Very good. There is, I mean, the, the most 
of B, I, and J are zero, but the ones corresponding to a zero eigenvalue, essentially what happens is that we are taking the, end, the, the, the UK representation, which is split in a, irreduce, in a set of N irreducible representation, and then in each of these, there is a block which is non-zero under the action. It's a, a bit, uh, it's, it's a box-in-box -box computation, a bit, uh, but, but uh, it is the way which it works. Then there will be an illuminating cartoon from uh, superstring theory. Very good. So out of this result, we can start computing our our character. Now, the computation will go similarly to the case of the vortices. Let's try to write it. Okay, so I will write down V as the space sum over I e to the I K I of the I young tableau, uh, sorry, I put it down. This uh, is given splitting the chi along the these indices uh, is given by the sum over the position of the boxes in the Yanta blows T A L T one minus J U plus one T two minus I U plus one and then uh, there is a, a factor of W which is the sum over A U equal to 1 to n. And out of this, I compute the complete effective tangent space, let's say for the computation, which is given by V star times V, T1 plus T2 minus T1, T2, minus 1 plus W plus uh, W star times B plus V star times W T1, T2. Now, who are these? So, this is B1, this is B2, this is I, this is uh, this is J, this is, uh, this and this uh, are the um, adhesion constraints. Um, very good. After that, I can uh, compute from this, from this expression a, a, the expression in terms of, uh, of T, substituting this in terms of uh, the Yanta block counting. So I will write down the, the answer. Which is, uh, I have to count all the doublets because I'm taking the, the product U and V the sum over the position of each box in your doublet and Yan tableau, and then I have T A 
u v t one minus h v s. Now we will define who are these uh, a functions s h and uh, the function v v of uh, one is v and the other is q s plus one plus t a u v t one h of s t two v of u this is h of v and t minus so there is a plus one here and the minus v u of s here okay now I will define now, now, now we'll define okay so these are the vertical and the horizontal position of of the box with respect to the diagram uh, or the or, or the one which is counted or the other one in the sum the doublet and uh, okay once uh, so it are the distance from Okay, let's make a, let's try to make a picture. This picture is a, the the most difficult picture in teaching this stuff. So I will try to make it decently. It's I, it's very hard. Eh? I will not be able to make it really decent. So let's say we stop here. Then our second Diane diagram will go like that. <sighs> How long we do it? Okay, like that. That like that. Okay. So there are two Yan diagrams. One is uh, in these dotted lines. The solid lines instead are labeling the uh, 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 one, uh, the, the other one. So one is let's say W U. The other one is uh, Y U. The other Y V. And then given a point sitting. In S, the vertical with respect the uh, vertical with respect to the other diagram is uh, this set of white boxes. The horizontal with respect to the same diagram is uh, this set of crossings. If you prefer, for sometimes these stuff are called arm and leg of the box relative to one of the two diagrams, referring to the idea that there is somebody sitting on the box, okay, with legs like that and arms like that, okay? Very good. Now, in terms of these labels, then, finally, we can write down the fixed point formula for, uh, I mean, the, the, the one loop term. Now, the one loop term up to an overall set of gamma, of d gamma functions that we will specify later is given by the sum over all the Young diagrams, the set of N Young diagrams, there is a, an instant on, okay, let's fix the total number of boxes to be given by K, and then we take product U and V, 
from 1 to n, product on the solutions of S sitting in one of the two diagrams of the copy, and then we find a typical structure given by a rational expression in the box of the Yan diagram. Where the function E uvs is given by this formula here, a u v minus epsilon 1, the height with respect to v of the, bo uh, the box, plus epsilon 2, the vertical with respect to u of the box, plus 1. Okay. This is uh, the result for uh, a vector multiplet. There are analog results for matter in the joint. So for matter in the joint and for matter in the fundamental. So for matter in the joint, what uh, you have to add here in this product. So this is just, let's say, vector multiplet. Then if you add matter, you will have more terms in the character and so more terms in the product for each fixed point. So there will be numerators in this formula. Okay, good. So, of course, you expect there is a deformation corresponding to the mass to, uh, of the uh, hypermultiplet in the adjoint, which trivializes uh, the structure. This uh, is expected because, uh, in that case, uh, you have already in mind the fact that when I add a massless hypermultiplet to n equal to to n equal to vector multiplet, I promote the theory to n equal to 4. Okay, n equal to 4, uh, I mean, we know how the partition functions are done. These are done by eta functions. The eta functions uh, to some, some number, okay? The eta function expands, uh, so eta function expands in a um, number of partitions, okay? Number of partition means that for each Yan diagram, you will count a factor of one because each Yan diagram is a partition. And indeed, in the case of a joint, you will add for a joint. But you will find that here I have to add in the numerator a factor of EU V minus the mass times minus u v minus epsilon plus the mass. Okay. So that the two will cancel out. In the case of a fundamental, instead, you will put the uh, character of the, uh, of the fundamental. The character of the fundamental will bring only the index of the position in a single Yan diagram. Okay, because we were not taking the, the, the product of the two, okay? And so, in the case of the fundamental, there will be another form that we, I will write later when we do this in more detail. Now, let's make uh, an interpretation of this stuff. Because, I mean, like I put it, it is really out of the head. So let's try to find whether there is a, an inspirational cartoon from the best source we have to understand the non-perturbative effects in Young and Mills theory before doing the computation, which is a super string theory. Of course, since we are speaking about non-perturbative effects, we need to look at non-perturbative, I mean, the sector which is non-perturbative in the superstring, so the brains. So the natural way to formulate the n equal to d equal to four gauge theory for, with, with the brains is to set up a set of d3 brains in flat space time. Now, 
If I do that, I would do the n equal to 4 theory. You know? So I need to kill of the six transverse scalars, four of them. Very good. So I will put the theory in R4 times R2 times C2 over Z2. So this projection is killing the two of the transverse scalars. And so in this setup, I will find this theory. Now, here, I, I have in mind that I'm doing the SUN theory. So there are n d3 brains. OK, where are the instantons? The instantons are the instantons which are distributed among these D3 brains. The A parameters which were entering are now labeling the distances between the D3 brains. And finally, so the D instantons will be distributed inside the single D3 brains. Now, once they are Okay, so the number of instantons is the number of d minus one brains that I have to distribute. So since I have n d three brains, there will be a splitting of this in k one in the first d three brain plus k two plus blah 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 until I fill in all the number of allowed d instantons. Now the instantons. Once they are in, they will be in some state. Since they are indistinguishable, these the instantons, they will sit in a state labeled by a permutation of the number. They are indistinguishable particles. So it means that each state of these the instantons will be labeled inside here by a Yan tableau. Okay, and voila, we have a cartoon of what we were saying before. Non perturbatively, it is natural to expect that counting, of course, BPS states, because all this is a stable as a BPS bound state, so we're counting BPS bound state, is natural to think that the, the, the sum of all possible states in telling us how you distribute these d minus brains in, 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 this, uh, in this set of d3 brains is given by a sum over n Yan tableaus. And then uh, there will be formulas telling us how to weight uh, these terms. Uh, these are a bit more difficult to engineer in super state theory, but can be done. I mean, the omega deformation. The omega deformation is, a, in a way, I mean, giving a no, a, a no commutative structure of the space. Okay, in the old Cyberwitten story of, of open strings, uh, the non commutativity corresponds to a big field. Okay, so it is like if I'm turning on a, a small big field. Okay, very good. Eh? Uh, the A parameters. Okay, the A parameters, I mean, we are engineering the, the theory to be in the Coulomb branch. Okay, so the wave of the, um, of the scalar in uh, the transverse dimension, the one which is remaining, is the one where I'm enlarging the D3 brains. Okay, I'm elongating the system of D3 brains. Very good. Some more questions? Okay. Now, an appetizer for what we will do later. Here we are saying that we have, uh, that we are speaking about n equal to d equal to 4 
gauge theories. So everybody of you from the kindergarten know that that theory in the low energy limit has been solved much earlier by Seiberger and Witten in, a, in some famous papers here. Sorry, I want to get rid of this, all this stuff. Okay. Which told us that the effective Lagrangian of the theory, let's take the SU2 theory in the Coulomb phase, so broken to one, in the points where there is a, a, a vector, a massless vector which, uh, which stays in the, in the game in the, to describe the effective theory, is parameterized by the so-called prepotential, which means uh, that we write the, the Lagrangian, the effective Lagrangian, as uh, in n equal to one supermultiplet formalism in terms of an holomorphic function, which is parameterizing the Lagrangian like that. Okay. Very good. A is the current multiplet. W is the vector multiplet. Now, the question is, how is the thing we have been computing related to this stuff? At the time, omega deformation was not there. Okay, so we have to see whether we are able to turn off the omega deformation and to obtain a function only of the Cartan variables. So, the recipe is the following. You take the negative partition function and you expand it like that. The first term in this expansion turns out to be nothing but the uh, cyber vita prepotential. Okay, in case there are masses. Maybe there are plus orders in epsilon 1, epsilon 2. We will comment much more on these formulas once we will have a stronger instrument to analyze the situation, which is a surface operators in the gate theory. Why? Because we will see that the partition function in presence of surface operator will become a kind of wave function for a quantization of the cyber Witten curve. So, beware that there are a lot of concepts around and we have to try to keep them all with us to follow the story. But I find the story really nice. Okay, very good. So indeed, people, the first thing they did, Flume, Pogosian, Morales, Fucito, all these uh, uh, Tanzini, uh, Bruzzo and uh, also other people, they started doing the computations of this uh, negative partition function box by box. I mean, at the time they were doing it by hand because, okay, indeed, doing it by hand, one can start um, recovering the um, cyber Witten prepotential through the um, recipe I just raised. It is a, a fascinating exercise to do it, but since we have a lack of time, we will not do it. But I advertise you to um, take a look in, in the literature if you want really to master this kind of topics 
in order to uh, then learn how to write down a program in Mathematica who will do it for you. And I mean, this is, these are exercises which have been done later. And now I think that current mathematical code compute uh, next to a partition function in a decent time up to 15. Okay, then maybe there will be more. Uh, but fortunately, there are other techniques also to verify these formulas. Other questions, comments, complaints? Okay, very good. So, I would like to write down a bit more complicated formulas. Now, this, is, this will be really boring, eh? but uh, it is needed to do uh, the AGT to, 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 to catch the AGT correspondence in a full. Suppose so that uh, we have uh, a Please. Okay, okay, for me it's okay. For me it's okay. If it's a good point to stop. <laughs> uh. No, I mean. You, okay, no, no. We, we need to do also some discussion. It's true. It's true. It's true. So I was going straight for two hours, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay, okay. Very, I mean, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, because I wanted to start uh, to, to, to write more, uh, more detailed uh, formulas for the necros of partition function, write down uh, the one loop part, uh, the classical part, uh, which will be the object that uh, we will uh, um, that we will uh, um, uh, work with uh, uh, in the detailed AGT correspondence. But maybe it's okay. I mean, we can stop here. Okay. So. Okay. Mol 